we have already mentioned that the aim of stream of consciousness writers is to depict imagined inner lives of the fictional characters, the psychological state, more precisely the mental and spiritual experiences, which provides access to a character's thoughts, as if the reader were getting a live report from a character's mind. Melvin Friedman says the stream of consciousness novel should be regarded as the one uh, which has uh, as its essential concern the exploitation of a wide area of consciousness, generally the entire area uh, of one or more characters. Uh, the same opinion was expressed by Robert Humphrey, who stated that consciousness indicates the entire area of psychic structure. A stream of consciousness fiction unites whole area of psychic processes, conscious and unconscious, the latter being chaotic, irrational, and illogical. But at the same time, he emphasized the idea that stream of consciousness is particularly concerned with subconscious, as he calls pre-speech levels of psychic activity. Thus, according to the widespread definitions of stream of consciousness novels, the range of interest of this kind of literature embraces the whole structure of human psyche, conscious and unconscious with its levels, but it is particularly concentrated on the unconsciousness, uh, unconscious layers of the psyche. Uh, it may be assumed that the area of stream of consciousness activity is rather wide, serving to reveal the levels close to the surface of the psychic structure as well as, and particularly, the deeper levels. Uh, forms and techniques uh, of stream of consciousness writing. The satisfactory depiction of consciousness required either the invention of new fictional techniques or a refocusing of the old ones. According to Robert Humphrey, the four basic techniques uh, employed in presenting the stream of consciousness, interior monologue, Humphrey divides uh, in, uh, interior monologue into direct interior monologue and indirect interior monologue, soliloquy and omniscient description. The latter two forms are used to reveal the psychic level close to the surface, and the first two depicting the deeper ones. Uh, omniscient description. Omniscient description belongs to old fictional technique, which in a stream of consciousness novel requires refocusing. This technique is employed in stream of consciousness writing to describe the psychic content of a character in the author's words written in the third person. The consciousness of the character comes to the reader through the voice of the author. Interior monologue. Gerald Prince argues that the two terms, stream of consciousness and interior monologue, are frequently associated with each other. In his dictionary of narratology, he gives the following statements. Though interior monologue and stream of consciousness have often been considered interchangeable, they have also frequently, uh, they have also uh, frequently been contrasted. The former would present a character's thoughts rather than impressions or perceptions, uh, while the latter would present both impressions and thoughts, uh, or else the former would respect morphology and syntax, whereas the latter would not, uh, and would, and would thus capture uh, thought in its nascent stage, prior to any logical connection. Uh, interior monologue is, rather, uh, is a rather general term which refers to inner activity, regardless of the deeper levels of psychic structure or psychic level close to the surface. Uh, as you remember, Robert Humphrey divided interior monologue into direct interior monologue and indirect interior monologue. And now let us deal with direct interior monologue. Direct interior monologue presents consciousness directly to the reader. 
usually the first person pronoun is employed. The author either completely disappears from the narration or interferes negligibly. It is mainly concerned with depicting discontinuity of thought at the pre-speech level. Uh, indirect interior monologue. In indirect interior monologue, the author presents unspoken material as if it were directly from the consciousness of a character and with commentary and description guides the reader through it. Usually the second or third person pronouns are employed. It mainly focuses on the level of consciousness nearer the surface and even one that illustrates a verbalized thought level present, though actually unuttered. Uh, soliloquy. Soliloquy is defined as a technique of representing the psychic content and processes of a character directly from a character to reader without the presence of the author. Usually the first person pronoun is employed and mainly focuses on the surface level of consciousness. It is characterized with greater coherence than the interior monologue. Analyze the story according to theoretical foundations given above. Um, devices. Free association method. If you remember, we discussed free association method when we were dealing with uh, Virginia Woolf's story. Uh, and now let us remember uh, what free association uh, stands for. Uh, the chief technique in controlling the movement of stream has been an application of the principles of psychological free association. It is a device which shows how the character's consciousness is switched from one thing to another. Three factors uh, control the association. First, the memory, which is its basis. Second, the senses, which guide it. And third, the imagination, which determines its elasticity. Uh, montage. Montage is the basic device for the films. In stream of consciousness literature, it has a fundamental purpose to represent the dual aspect of human life, the inner life, uh, simultaneously with the outer life. Among the secondary devices of montage, Humphrey names the following multiple view, slow ups, fade outs, close ups, panorama, and flashbacks. Uh, now, discuss Anita Desai's story according to forms and devices of stream of consciousness writing. What devices are used to help the reader identify a change of different level of consciousness in the story?